Hey guys, Brian here with Folk Gaming. Today I'm going to bring you out some zombie footage. I haven't done anything on a zombie yet on the channel. And this will be the first of many foot zombie footages that you will be on the channel. But um, I just w I needed a background for what I wanted to talk about today, which is the pros and cons that I have found, in my opinion, to be in Black Ops 2 so far. Um, this is strictly just my opinion. I'm not saying this is for everybody. I'm not saying this everybody hates these things or likes these things. This is my opinion. If y'all see it from a different point of view or have something else that y'all want to add or whatever, please comment. I'm open to it. Um, don't be like too harsh or anything. Don't be rude about this. Uh, let me know. Like, tell me what y'all like or don't like, or what y'all think. If I said something I don't like, but y'all like it, let me know and tell me y'all. Tell me y'all's reasoning behind it. I'm really uh, interested to see uh, what y'all have to say. Um, so I'm gonna start off with the uh, dislikes first, and then move into the likes. Um, so what first thing let's talk about is the uh, score streaks. I like and don't like the score streaks. Um, I like them in the fact that it sort of balances out the uh, game balances out multiplayer. No one person is going to just be flying through the kill streaks or score streaks now and just annihilating everyone with the high uh, streaks. Uh, but I don't like how it just takes forever to build it up. Like if you're playing kill confirmed or something like that, yeah, you you can build it up really really fast. Um, because you get 50 points for the kill and then another 100 for confirming the kill. Whereas it gives you 150 for just a single kill, unlike in like Team Deathmatch when you only get 100 for a single kill. Um, but, and I understand what um, they did, what they did with the score streaks to balance out everything. And I understand why they made the score streaks and not kill streaks now, because you get a lot of extra like points for different stuff in this game now. Like you get for shock assist, the guardian suppress, the UAV assist. Like you get a bunch of stuff now that you weren't able to get in previous Call of Duty games to add up your, to, towards your points. Um, and I understand that. But it's just like, why did it take so long to get like a UAV or a counter UAV or like an RCXD? Like those low levels uh, streaks, and this still takes you forever to build those up. I'm like, why? Why did it take you so long? I mean, I normally use like a care package... Uh, like lightning strike or something like that, and then like a dragon fire. Usually, that's what I usually use. Um, sometimes I'll change it up and use something else, but that's why I normally use. It's like, why did it take me so long to get a care package instead of just like four kills, you know? But um, that's what that's mainly what all I have to say about score streaks. But uh, uh, another thing in multiplayer that I think everyone has complained about in every Call of Duty game, um, and technically we say we. Like, why the heck do bullets curve around the corners? Like, what? how is this possible? It's defying physics. It's like the movie Wanted, where they make the bullets curve. Well, technically, they don't curve. They do go through the very corner of the wall, or the building, or whatever. But still, it's like, it seems like they curve around the wall, and it just really sucks. Um, I wish they would do something about that, just to stop that. I mean, I get, like, it's... Technically, not defying physics because it's just going through the wall and it's a high-powered assault rifle or something. But still, I mean, come on, fix this somehow. Do something where this doesn't happen because like, you're supposed to be able to hide behind a building and survive. Um, but uh, that's I don't know. I just I always complain about the Kobe bullets thing. But um, next is shotguns. While most of the gun, like all the guns in the uh, multiplayer are very balanced, and I love that Treyarch did such a great job of balancing out every gun and so there's not one gun that's really overpowered, except for the shotguns. The shotguns, it seems like in every Call of Duty game, they're really overpowered, and this should not be able to be fired from that distance to kill you in one shot. It's not a sniper rifle, it's a shotgun. And I fired several different types of shotguns. I fired a couple of them that are in this game. Um, well, I said one of them that's in this game. I've only fired the 870 in this game. But uh, and we get and I know the distance and the power behind it. But I get killed with it from across the map, and I don't get how that happens. 
<laughs> not really from across the map, but from a very far distance away. They should not be able to be killed from that far away. I wish they would really try to balance out the shotguns a little bit more, let them not so overpowered and people get so pissed off about it. Um, next thing I want to talk about is the uh, knifing uh, in zombies and multiplayer. Um, as y'all may have seen earlier in this footage, um, when I try to knife in like the earlier rounds, like rounds one, two, or whatever, when you, I try to knife through the barricade, it doesn't really work out that well. And I'm like, me and my friends were like, why did they change it? Because in like Black Ops 2, or Black Ops 1, I'm sorry, and like World at War, you were able to knife through the barricade to kill the zombies. And like, a lot of me and my friends and other people, we like to use our knives for the first like three rounds to save our money. So we don't waste money and stuff, and you get more points for knifing them, because you're not wasting ammo. Um, and I wish they would fix that, like, come out with some type of patch for it to, so you can knife through the barricade. Um, hopefully so, enough people will complain about it to where it will happen, but eh, who knows. Um, but also knifing in multiplayer, it seems like they nerfed knifing. I know that sounds weird, like how do you nerf a knife, but I think they actually did. Um... Because I'll be running, and I'll come up, and I'll be fine. Like, I'll run up, and me and the same we run straight at each other, and we're like, okay, we're both going to knife this guy. Or, like, each other. And I go up, and I get to jump on them, and I hit the knife. He doesn't die, so we spin around. I try to knife again, he doesn't die, and I'm hitting him. I know I'm hitting him. Because it's actually making, like, the little, when you go in to knife someone, how it sort of, like, lunges forward or something. Like, it ch like you know when you have, like, connected with a knife, usually. And I... I felt like I've connected with a knife all the time, but it just doesn't happen. Um, and I was just like, why is this happening? He's like, you should die. I should not be the one dying. I killed you first. But um, I really wish they would change that. Uh, the last thing that I have to complain about um, is the bouncing Bettys. While Greenland and like Modern Warfare 3 and stuff like that, I loved using the bouncing Bettys. They are a vital part of my gameplay. In this game, I don't haven't really used them, and I don't like using them, because it seems like they can be thrown so far. Are we playing Frisbee golf? Are we playing Ultimate Football? Like, what are we doing? Like, why can these Frisbee... Like, I'm, I was about to call it a Frisbee, but why can these bouncing beddies be thrown so far? It like, doesn't make any sense. Like, it's a metal piece of equipment. It should not be able to be thrown more than, like, 5 to 10 feet. But somehow you'll chunk it as far as you can throw a grenade. I mean, I don't get why that happens, but I really wish they would do something about that too, because I just get sick of seeing enemies, I'm firing at them, also, and one of the enemies throws a bouncy betty into the air and lands right on top of me, and we're a well distance apart from each other. Um, but that's all the cons I have to talk about. Um, I'm going to go into the pros now. Um, let's start off with zombies since we are playing zombies right now um, for everything other than the little knifing issue that I've talked about before zombies has been awesome I've loved playing the zombies oh excuse me um oh excuse me who thing um, but I've loved playing the zombies it's great fun I love playing it with my friend I play it like with people just randomly online like I am in this match um yeah these aren't my friends these are just a random public match um, but I love playing it. I love the transit mode where you get to go on the bus and get all the different like gadgets that you can build. Um, then you turn on the power and you do more stuff. It's a lot of fun, and I love all the little bitty places that you get to go in zombies. Like yeah, the, there's like the four main, four four or five main like parts of the map where the bus stops. But if you in between those spots, there's a lot of places where you can go. After, like, the power's turned on, even when the power's not turned on, and go explore those places. Like, there's a bunch of places, like, in between the different main points of the map, where you can go explore. And while I haven't explored them all, I've explored a couple of them, and they're pretty worthwhile to go check out. There's different things in there that aren't anywhere else in the map. Um, but that's a lot of fun. Um, this, this is grief mode uh, that I'm playing right now. Uh, if some of y'all haven't played zombies. Uh, grief mode is basically you have two teams, the CDC and the CIA. It just allows for a bigger group party or whatever to play zombies. Um, while only one team can survive to the end, you can work together 
for the most part. Until, basically, you have to give up on the other team. And only people from the same team can heal each other. So as you saw, I just healed that C other CDC guy. And then she, I'm not trying to heal all those CIA guys other down. <laughs> um, but I love zombies for the most part. It's a lot of fun. I love playing it. I love the mystery box. All the little pucks. Stuff you get to get. The Juggernaut. I mean, everyone loves Juggernaut. Um, but yeah, I love playing zombies. It's one of my favorite things to do on Black Ops. When I'm like this getting sick of multiplayer, getting pissed off out of it, let's go play some zombies and kill a bunch of zombies on Zombie Apocalypse. Why not? You know? Um, so, so that's all I have to say about zombies. Um, next, let's talk about a little bit of multiplayer. Um, let's talk about the leagues first, the new leagues they've come up with. Um, well, the most part, I love leagues. It gives you an everyday player a chance to play competitively, competitively. I can't say that word for some reason right now. I don't know why. I'm a little tired, I think. But it uh, allows an average player to play competitively. And uh, I think that's awesome. I think it's great. Because a lot of people, they may be good enough. They may be awesome players. But they don't have a team to play with. Or they have like, you know. So I think it's great. You can go play competitively. Maybe find a team. You hook up with them. You play with them. And just set, you know. And like me, I've already have a team, but I mean that doesn't mean we're looking for more people to uh to be on a team or play against or whatever. Um, it's definitely better than playing public matches sometimes, to where it's like you're playing against these this bunch of random people and they, they seem to piss you off all the time. Uh, you can play against a team though, and it's just like a real good matchup, you know. I do wish they did a little bit more with the playlist, like added some different playlists in there instead of just the two they have. Um, because, like, I like playing one because it's 4v4, and I mainly play with just three other players on my team, but it's like, you don't get as much, you like, don't get the score streaks, you don't get some of the other stuff, but on the other one, it's 6v6, but, it's, you know, you get score streaks, but it's like, I don't always have six players with me, or, like, five other players with me, and I don't like playing with random people, and things like this, so it's, eh, but for the most part, I love leagues. Uh, let's go into the, uh, creator class and the gun balance stuff. Um, the gun balances, like I've said, have been much better than any other Call of Duty game, except for, of course, the shotguns, like I said. Um, there's no real one assault rifle that's overpowered, one LMG, one SMG, one sniper rifle. There's nothing really that's really, oh, more overpowered than anything else. And that's why I love, like, and, um, Black Ops 1, it was like the FAMAS was really overpowered, or the AK-74U seemed to be like the main guns that everyone used, you know, like because they were really overpowered, and Modern Warfare 3, it was like the ACR was really overpowered, or Type 95, or things like that, those guns were really overpowered, and people got pissed, even while people liked using them, they were getting pissed off because other people were using them, and I don't really see how that makes any sense, but they were overpowered, and it did sort of it sometimes make you upset. But in this game, there's really no one gun that's really more overpowered than the rest, and I love that. Treyarch did a great job of making sure that it was all the guns were really um, the same. Um, and then let's go to creator class. I love the 10 point creator class system because it even more so balances out the players that um, you can't have really that many of the most powerful, like, really juggernauts of the game, you know? It really allows for more freedom of your creative classes, because sometimes I don't use a secondary, or I don't use equipment, and that, like, why waste a uh, slot or something putting on this equipment or whatever? Why not give me the option to not put equipment on and put something else in this place? And Treyarch has done that now. <laughs> um, it's great. I love that you have that option, and it balances out the team's or bounces out the players a lot more. Um, you equip uh, more than one puck in a slot, like two puck ones, or two puck twos, or two puck threes, or you can put put all six, like put six pucks on there, um, run around to knife the entire match, which is pretty fun sometimes. You know, sometimes it may piss you off with other people doing it. But uh, I think that's fun. I think how you can attach like three attachments to a gun. Uh, and that's what I also like. Like, quick draw now is not a puck, it's an attachment. So that's really great. Or like, uh, 
what's another one that's like was a Pokemon out attachment? I think. Why can't I think of one? It's really pissing me off. Or oh, oh, like the adjustable stock is like a you able to move faster while aiming. That was like a a perk in a Modern Warfare 3, but now it's an attachment. I think that's really great. Um, I love playing that. Or you can like equip like a assault rifle or like a primary weapon and just have the knife as a secondary, which is pretty fun. Um, but other than that, I love the creative class system. I love how it's so open and so free to, uh, for people to use. Um, that's all I have to talk about with multiplayer right now. Um, while there may be a lot more that I could talk about, these are the things just off the top of my head and that I've really thought about. Um, the fun thing I want to talk to you about is the campaign. I do have to say, if y'all haven't played the campaign yet and y'all don't want to find out, well, I don't really spoil like the storyline or anything like that from the campaign. I do talk about some stuff that y'all may not want to know about if y'all want to really be surprised about it. About what's going to happen in the campaign, all the little stuff that you may get to do in the campaign. Um, like I said, I'm not going to tell you anything from the storyline or anything like that. I'm just going to talk about look, all the little side things that you get to do. Um, like the things you get to do in each mission, like the little fun stuff you get to do in each mission. Not like talking about the actual campaign in general. Or in the story mode. Um, but uh, so if y'all don't want to see, hear any of that, go ahead, turn off the video. Um, but please like, comment, subscribe, do whatever. Um, if y'all enjoyed it, please leave anything that y'all think may be a pro or con that I may have missed. But uh, let's go in the campaign now. Um, so. I love the campaign, like the entire campaign is great, like in general campaign is awesome. I have not really had any complaints about the campaign. Um, I love all the little things you get to do in the campaign now, like the wingsuit flying you got to do, the uh, vehicles you get to drive, or like the robots you get to operate or whatever, uh, the jet you get to fly, that was pretty fun. Um, the uh, jet chute that you get to fly on the final mission which was pretty cool, even though I, you basically just had to like steer it around the stuff they were shooting at you I would say give you a little more access to fly it more but I can't complain it was a lot of fun um, I love all the like little weapon caches I guess you could call them that they allow you to get into like in the first mission you get like the bear traps and then in some missions you get like a machete other missions you get like the shark uh, thrust knuckle things sometimes you get like a robot that you can operate in them there's a lot of stuff and I think that's that's fun like it gives you not only the uh, stuff that you put in your loadout, but you get a little additive that you get during the mission. And speaking of your loadouts, that's one of my most favorite things that I've seen or found in Black Ops 2 so far. Is that you get to customize your loadouts for each mission in the campaign. That is by far the best thing I've ever seen. When I noticed that they were doing that, I was so happy. Um, because it allows you not, because in previous Call of Duty games you just had to go with what they gave you. And I'm like, but I don't normally really use this weapon, I don't like using this weapon, you know? But now you just get full, free reign to equip what weapons you have, what like attachments you have, all the little other stuff that you get to choose from in your loadouts. I think that's awesome, I love, love that. Um... Because it just gives you more open freedom. That's why, look, Treyarch has really given you the freedom to do what you want in all aspects of Black Ops 2. And that's what I love. Um, oh, there's a lot of zombies. But uh, that's what I really love. Um, the campaign storyline is absolutely by far great. One of the best storylines I've played in all the Call of Duty games. Um, I love how they're incorporating Black Ops 1 with it. You're allowed to you're playing as David Mason some, you're playing Alex Mason some, you're playing as dad and father all the time, you know. I think mean, that's great. Love it. Some of the best campaign gameplay I've ever played. Um, so I think, is that all I really have to talk about? That may be all I have to talk about. Yeah, I think it is. Um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now. But, uh, anyways guys, thanks for watching. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, comment. Y'all know what to do.
Um, I really appreciate it if y'all subscribe. I really want those subscribers. I really want those comments. I really want those likes. Um, and keep coming back to the channel for more. And I'll try to do my best to uh, keep y'all happy. Um, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.